Hi, this is Curl Bro, and I support Gen X Grown Up on Patreon, and you should too. And if you don't, I hope you leave enough room for my fists, because I'm going to ram it in your stomach and break your spine. Just go to genxgrownup.com slash Patreon to sign up today. No life, no fun. Don't you know that you're a grown up? Gen X Grown Up is a YouTube channel website and audio podcast you're listening to right now. All made for and by people who love exploring media, games, tech, and toys of yesterday and today through the eyes of Gen Xers who refuse to grow up. Your dinner cannot just be french fries. Basically, life sucks as a grown up. Welcome back, Gen X Grown Up Podcast listeners, to this episode 152 of the Gen X Grown Up Podcast. I am John. Joining me, as always, of course, is George. Hey, how's it going, guys? It's not even, not even worth showing up without Mo. Hey, Mo, how's it going? <laughs> hey, guys, how's it going, guys? <laughs> In this episode, we head to the theater to see what critics are calling the best horror film of the year. Check out a free must-have audio app for your Windows PC and have some Dungeons & Dragons role-playing fun in the latest entry in the Baldur's Gate franchise. Mm -hmm. People on my, my friends list won't shut up about this Baldur's Gate 3 mode, so I hope you will enlighten me <laughs> wow. what it is that they all want to talk about. So I'm looking forward to hearing that. We'll have those topics and many more coming up. First, though, I want to jump into some fourth listener email. Look, there are three of us. I'll listen. Mo will listen. Periodically at gunpoint, George will listen too. But if anyone That's else true. listens... Yeah. <laughs> if I'm in one of your cars and you happen to be playing the podcast you're the time, I don't have much then you're going to hear it. Right, right. Never <laughs> voluntarily is what I'm getting at. <laughs> if anyone else <laughs> listens, not under duress, you are the fourth listener. And the fourth listener this time around is Nick G. And he wrote in with a subject line, boop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, okay. So here's his email. Hey guys, loving the podcast. Thank you. Well, there we go. Me mail over. Thank you so much, Nick. Appreciate you. <laughs> That's all we need. Uh, and he goes on to say, the latest episode on uh, August 10th was inspiring. After listening, I watched wow. Asteroid City. He was City. not listening to our podcast. No, you always say that, bit. George. Like no it's one could possible. be inspired. No. Every time someone says nice, you're like, not our show. Not our show. <laughs> well, see, mm -hmm. you know, how would you know you don't listen? How would you even know? <laughs> I listened in the past. Now I don't. That's how I know. Oh, that, that's why, because you don't like it. I understand. Uh, Nick says, after listening, he did listen. I went on and watched Asteroid City. I'd been eyeing it for a few weeks, but you pushed me ah, over the line, and I'm glad okay. I watched it. That's still on my list. Yeah, it's sort of defied any kind of genre and is simply quirky. It is quirky. It is definitely quirky. Yeah. That's um, probably the best single word description <laughs> of Asteroid City. Yep. That's a fair assessment. Then he went on to say, then I found Boop for less than $35 on Amazon oh, and bought it okay. based on your review alone, John. Oh, well, It was like 80 bucks and he found it for under. Good for him, first of all. Yeah, right? Yeah. Well, that's good. Maybe they finally have a second printing or something. Yeah. Good on you, Nick, for finding it for cheap. I think it was like 75 or 80 bucks when you were looking last, George. So that, that mm -hmm. bodes well for you and your wife who wanted a copy. So uh, He says, you see, I'm tired of being a board game collector. He says, ever since my wife passed away, I haven't had anybody to play any of these great board games. Uh, I keep buying. He was just collecting them. He's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's buying them, but he never gets to play them. Yep. Uh, he says, but this, I think I can probably get my kids age 12, 9, and 6 to play with me. Mm, yes, absolutely. If it is what you claim it to be, John. No pressure. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> <laughs> I think absolutely, Nick, you'll have no problem getting your kids to play this. It's yeah. easy to play. I remember when I when I first saw it, it was like a grown up and a little seven or eight year old playing together and they were having a great time with it. Yeah. Yeah. I think most some of your grandchildren were playing the game at the convention yeah. too, weren't they? Yeah. Not perfectly, but they were having fun. Well, but they're, <laughs> they're kids, <playing>. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're having fun. Yeah. All right. Well, I think you'll have no, you won't be disappointed that you picked it up, Nick. So, so, uh, and lucky that you found it at that price. He wraps up his email by saying, thanks for the fun idea, Nick. Awesome. We appreciate you. Thanks so much, Nick. Hey, if you would like your email featured here on the show like Nick's was, it's drop dead easy. All you've got to do is fire off an email to podcast at genxgrownup.com. Read every single one of them, and most of them, like Nick's, is eventually going to make the show. All right, men, with that good business behind us, let's jump into the body of this episode 152 as soon as we get back from this break. The summer event Ahsoka is now streaming on Disney+. Plus. Witness the thrilling adventure of former Jedi Knight Ahsoka Tano as she uncovers a disturbing new threat to the galaxy far, far away. Don't miss the highly anticipated Star Wars series, Ahsoka, now streaming only on Disney+. Be sure to subscribe to or follow Gen X Grown Up wherever you listen. And while you're there, rate and review the show, too. It helps more than you know. 
Honey, why are you still eating cornflakes? Because I always eat cornflakes. <gasps> That's because you haven't thought about these. Post oat flakes? Mm -hmm. They're light, they're crispy, they taste great. Mm. And post oat flakes give you something cornflakes can't give you. And what's that? Oats. Oats? Post oat flakes are a significant source of oat bran. For oat nutrition, you can't get from cornflakes. Hmm. Well, what do you think? I think I'll always eat post oat flakes. <laughs> post oat flakes. Oat nutrition you can't get from cornflakes. Let's get the ball rolling, talking about media that we have been checking out. Now, of course, this could be film or music or comics or books or whatever you may be watching. And Mo, I'd like to get yeah. started with you. What you have on the sure. list, I'm sound, I think it's an older thing, but it's I think we know old, maybe yeah. why it's on the list. So what have you been watching? Okay, so it's definitely old. Well, we're old. That's fine. Yeah, but because like the writer's <laughs> strike and all this stuff, I've been catching up on shows that people are saying, you got to watch the show, and I'm finally getting around to watching it. Ah, okay. <laughs> Mo is actually doing the thing we all claim we were going to do, but he's doing yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm I'm moving through my fifth version or my fifth run through of Castle at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guilty of that same thing. Yeah, no, that's right. a good show. Uh, but this one, it's called Peaky Blinders. It's ah, a show that's been on heard of it. it's uh, Netflix right now. It's on Netflix. They they yeah. have five seasons, I think, and it's over. It's done. They finished the whole Six. run. Six seasons. Six seasons. Six. And they yep. finished mm -hmm. the whole run. Okay. Um, so I've watched the first two seasons already. Mm -hmm. Everybody I know has been saying like, you got to watch the show. I know you love this show. And I'm like, yeah, all right, whatever. I get to it. Mm -hmm. I get that a lot. I started watching it. Holy crap, man. This is such a good show. <laughs> it's such a good show. Uh, stars Killian Murphy. Uh, it was a 28 days later. He was the scarecrow yeah. in the Batman movie. Chris Nolan Batman's. He's been a whole bunch of stuff. Well, he was just Oppenheimer, right? Is that guy? Oh, oh, yes. Oppenheimer. Thank you. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Basically, it's about this family, the Shelby's who are gangsters um, mm -hmm. and they start off as kind of like low level sort of neighborhood gangsters in England, you know, and it's right after World War One. And him and his brothers, they were all in the war. They all came back. They all came back. Not awesome. In most cases, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of PTSD war. and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. he's basically the middle brother and he's sort of bringing the family from a little gang to a major underworld power. I don't know what you want to call it. And let me tell you, the acting is just phenomenal. The story, uh, there's a woman who plays Aunt Polly, who's and she's like the matriarch of the family. Mm -hmm. Nobody mm -hmm. screws with her. <laughs> like, nobody <laughs> screws with her. Just the acting, the stories, everything on this thing sucked me in. And they do the thing that kind of back in the day when they ended the season, they left you on that cliffhanger that you're like, oh, my God, I got to watch the next season. Mm -hmm. They do yeah. this pretty much every single freaking time. So it's yeah. like I just finished season three and I'm like ready to jump to season four. And, and my girlfriend's like, no, you can't watch it yet. You know, it's like we watched four episodes <laughs> today. We're done. So I had to stop. <laughs> but let me tell you, I'm chopping the bit to get into that next season. What made you pick this show up after so long? And I know you said people recommended it. And I mean, yeah. that happens to me a lot, too. And I go, yeah, I'll get to it someday and never do. And as old as it is, what got your attention to jump into it all of a sudden? Uh, oh, actually, it was funny because it was like we were out of town and I didn't have my Plex available. <laughs> and so this is on okay. Netflix and I could get to my Netflix oh. account. And I was like, oh, I, and I've swept because it's always at the top of my recommendations. It's always up there for some reason. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh, hey, you said we should watch this one. And Amy's like, oh, yeah, let's watch it. She was very excited. She'd seen the whole thing already, but she was totally willing to watch it again. And we, I said, start watching it. And it was it will suck you in for sure. You started watching it out of necessity, basically. <laughs> it was it was there. You know, yeah. well, I got some good potential news for you, Mo. John and I were looking at this on the list earlier today and we were talking uh -huh. And I was curious because I remembered that it had been on for a long time. I knew yeah. it had been on BBC Two originally. Then it I got moved so, yeah. over to BBC One. And I was curious just to see if it was continuing or not. And I saw a six season was the end. Mm -hmm. But there was a note in the article that I was reading. They did plan on doing a seventh season. But instead oh, really? of doing the seventh season, they decided to switch it in true BBC fashion to a movie uh, that is theoretically being released next year. Ooh. Now, well, I don't BBC. know how the writers, yeah. it's, it's in England. So I don't know how the writer's strike may or may not affect, because I know a lot of the actors in the show are Screen Actors Guild members. Mm -hmm. I don't know if yep. it affects them. This is something John and I were talking about, like, could the strike affect them in other countries under other production things and stuff like that? I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Maybe they say, no, we're not doing it out of solidarity. Or maybe they right. say, fuck it, that's America. They're screwed. We're mm -hmm. going to do our own thing. <laughs> but it, it potentially, they were supposed to have start filming in the spring of this year. So um, there may be a seventh season movie, movie. kind of hey. like what they did with The mm. Office or some other right. shows. Oh, so that's awesome. You might get some more of this. And they did with Deadwood, too. They did that instead of doing another season. That's right. Movie. Yep. Yeah. That's a cool trend. This is a yeah. good show. Um, as, And usually BBC, you know, the seasons are only six episodes. They're, they're short, but oh, the wow. episodes themselves Can't are like write. an hour long. 
long. So it's, it's you know, they're pretty, a lot happens in each episode, let's put it that way. Mm-hmm. The acting, the characters, I mean, and the thing is, it's funny because they're like the, the bad guys, right? They're the gangsters. They're the, okay. but the people they're dealing with who are like legitimate people, the politicians, the police, uh, they're like way worse than them. <laughs> So, <laughs> you know, so it's, huh. I'm like, I'm like, huh, I guess. So it's, it's like, a documentary. Yeah, it. things haven't changed that much. You know? <laughs> but yeah, I can't recommend it enough. So, but that's what I've been watching. So how about you, George, what have you been watching these days? Well, uh, in particular, this day that we're recording is when I watched the thing on my list. Oh, I right. actually had planned on talking about the seventh season of Billions, the show from oh, Showtime yeah, yeah. that's coming back mm-hmm. for its final season. They were looking back, forward to that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, John, one of your favorite actors, Damian Lewis, was the lead for like five seasons and they took him out of season six. He walked away. Now he's coming back. But I decided instead uh, to talk about a Netflix docu-series, limited series that Mm -hmm. was, to Mo's point, at the top of my recommendation list Mm -hmm. because I watch a ton of documentaries on Netflix. Uh, It's called Arnold. And I'm sure everybody out there can guess it's truthfully about the life of Arnold Schwarzenegger. What you talking about, Willis? Oh, his, damn it. Wrong no, Arnold. My bad. Different Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> But it's told through his storytelling, his point of view. There is no voiceover documentarian, like narrating the thing or anything like that. It's just Arnold talking himself through his life experiences, all the way from being a little boy in Austria, all the way up to where he is now in his 70s here in America. And I was very happy and pleasantly surprised that I'm sure he had a lot of editorial control over this, but at no point did he seem to shy away from controversial subjects in his Mm. history, especially the political stuff that he did when he was governor of uh, California, California, the breakup of his wife, the affair with the housekeeper. He went through each one of those things in pretty solid detail. Hmm. And after I got done watching it uh, for the third episode, there are three episodes. They're about an hour. Some of them a little longer than an hour. I was I was surprised that I found myself in tears at the end of the third episode. Oh, it's a good documentary. It was it pulls emotion out of you. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah, but it wasn't out of tears like, oh my god, this is so horrible and tragic. It was out of tears because here is a person who, in our current political climate in America, is on one side of the fence and other people are on another side of the fence, and we know how divisive those fences are in America. But he, throughout his entire life, including the time when he was governor of California and before and beyond, has worked hard to say, why am I going to call any person my enemy? Why not just say, hey, let's admit that we have differences of opinion, but figure out a way to work together. I wasn't living in California at the time. I had lived in California right before Mm -hmm. he became governor. And I know California was going through a lot of rough financial troubles, but I was very surprised. I didn't realize just how many of both parties he brought into his administrative team and how much he worked across the aisles. Yes, he was elected as a Republican, Mm -hmm. but at no point did he go far right batshit crazy, nor did he let anybody who was far left batshit crazy derail the momentum of what he was trying to do. And some of the stuff that he was talking about, especially when he got into his family tragedies in history, uh, his mm-hmm. brother died at a young age. His father had massive PTSD from World War II and oh, fought really? with the Nazis, as well as many of the Austrian men did. Uh, oh, and they came I back thought of that. broken men. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. He talked about how that informed his viewpoint of human beings. You know, because he saw these people that were basically lied to and led down the wrong path by Hitler in that case. And he related it to people today going down these militant paths of of belief, whether it's one way or the other, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It's just, Mm -hmm. you know, they're being lied to and fed all these lies and they're building up all this hate instead of realizing, hey, don't we all just want to be loved? Let's come together and figure out a way to work it out. That's why I was at tears at the end of Man, the Man, you're starting to pull emotion out of me. That's I always kind of <laughs> thought he was a decent dude. You know, 
r- r- mm-hmm. I, I say always when, when, I, when we were kids in the eighties, I didn't know anything about him. He's just a movie star. Right. But I mean, as right. you start to see him more in social media and stuff and, and yeah, yeah I, I won't dig into it, but effectively you see tweets and videos he records mm-hmm. and stuff. And I'm like, wow. I mean, maybe that somebody wrote that for him. Maybe he's just a nice dude or whatever, but I, I love finding out that people that I like on a, a fan level turn out they're actually decent people in the first place. And it yeah, doesn't yeah. like make me feel bad or dirty about liking that person, you know? Yeah, right. <laughs> it's really, it's nice. It, it's, it's good for your soul to go, oh, my, my, my radar was right. I was correct to like them. That's, it's, it's validated. That's cool. Yeah. I think what I really liked about it the most was just not that he's a good dude, as you put it, but also yeah. that he admitted to his <laughs> mistakes and his flaws. And oh, geez. it's oftentimes that somebody who is, you know, got a lot to lose will mm-hmm. try to defend or deflect. He did none of that. He yeah. accepted it. I was stupid. I did the wrong thing, and I apologize to anybody I offended. Yeah, I mean that's you, you don't you don't hear that at all anymore mm. in politics. They mm-hmm. will never admit a mistake. Right. They will no. see the evidence even public right there life in front people of them. Won't do that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they'll see the evidence right there in front of them, and by and they'll still say it didn't happen. They'll you just know? deflect. Yeah. Well, and that's yeah. a your misinterpretation. That never happened. Yeah, yeah. that didn't happen, or you know whatever. So yeah, so I mean I appreciate that. He did admit that he didn't like Sylvester Stallone in the eighties. Okay, he did admit that. That's okay. See. You're not required to like <laughs> Sylvester Stallone. That's a that's not a punishable offense. Right. Exactly. It's okay. <laughs> but as you can imagine, St- Sylvester Stallone was in the documentary, and it was all laughs and guffaws about their rivalry. <laughs> They now, apparently yeah. could not stand to be in the same room with each other at that point, but have obviously now since mm. come to respect oh. each other and become friends. So I'm watching this awesome. documentary. You sold me. I mean, yeah, me yeah. Too. <laughs> it's really worth the watch. It's three and a half hours of your life. It's on Netflix. Go check it out. But before you do that, you might want to take a look <laughs> at the topic that John has, because apparently oh. it's the best horror film of the year. That, that is what critics are saying. He said with dubious questioning. <laughs> Well, I don't know if you've seen many horror movies this year, but they haven't been great in general. If you go and see them, there's been a few yeah. that have been okay. They've been yeah, okay. okay. It's not the best yeah. we get, though, right? That's yeah. That's that's how I felt. Yeah, and like so, I came out of this film. I knew almost nothing going in. The film is called Talk to Me. You might have seen the trailer. The trailer doesn't tell you much other than you see a bunch of kids in a room and there's like this ceramic hand that they hold and something crazy yeah. happens. Yeah. Okay. So I went into the film knowing very little about it. Just the trailer pretty much is all I knew. I didn't go read a whole bunch about it. Other than I looked on Rotten Tomatoes and they said 95%. And I'm like, all right, we'll see, you know? Yeah. Jeez. And I came out of it and I'm like, like now I'm not sure. I'm, it's my, my gauge for what a good movies are are so skewed because there haven't really been great horror movies in a while. Okay. There have been okay ones, but I came out of there thinking like, I think that was really good. Am, am I right? Like now I want to see critics find out if oh. you know they think the same thing <laughs> you, I do. You want somebody to validate your possible yes, opinion? Yes, validate Is that my what opinion. Hearing? That's right. exactly right. <laughs> and so I'm like, no, no, it turns out a lot of people do think it's really good. Not everybody, of course, but so let me tell you a little bit about the film, which is really fascinating. It's at first, I didn't do a bunch of research on it, but here's what I do know. It's directed by, I think, uh, two brothers who run a YouTube channel. Oh. They kind of upped huh. their game and got a little money together to make this film in Australia. Okay. They okay. made it. It's the first full budget motion picture they have ever done. Nice. A24 saw it at a festival and said, we want to distribute oh, geez, that A24. film. <laughs> well, but they're just distributing. They That's right. Produce. They're just distributing. They didn't produce That's it. That's yeah. right. Uh, and they said, we want to back it. So this film is the first one by these directors. The premise is these kids have a great time with this hand. What happens is in a party, you <laughs> hold the hand. No, 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 I know. Ceramic hand, ceramic hand. <laughs> let, let, let me rewind. Oh, still not making it much better. Yeah, kids really? have a lot of fun at parties with this ceramic hand that's connected to the other otherworldly death realm or something. Uh, if, if someone hold, holds the hand and they say, talk to me, they will see sitting across from them someone who is dead a ghost and if Ah. you say i let you in boom you are immediately possessed by that person and you're like riding sidecar or the back seat this person is now in your body seeing through your eyes okay but your friends have to snap you out of it within 90 seconds or you'll get stuck that way Ooh. okay okay yeah yeah so so (laughs) So you you have like a preview period, okay. apparently. You so, do. That's right. A trial yeah. period before you return it. I mean, so I know you're saying you weren't sure if it was good or not. So did mm-hmm. your daughter see it? Because she is a horror movie. Absolutely. Yeah. 
And that, that was the other reason I wasn't sure if it was good or not, because she was not thrilled with it. She's like, it's pretty good. It's OK. But she and I'm like, are you broken? Will you never like a horror movie again? <laughs> Have you been jaded by the horrible movies in the past? I don't know. Well, but, but there's been some I mean, like, I'm not saying this year have been outstanding yeah, horror films, yeah. but within the last 12 months, there have been some solid horror films. And admittedly, we're not too traditional horror movie season yet either. Right. No, you're right. Yeah. And it feels like this thing dropped in the dead of summer, a horror movie was probably garbage. It's so is not. It's actually a very okay. small story about just these three kids and this mother and their friends. And what happens is you know, the tag along little brother goes with him to a party because he, you know, otherwise he's going to tell. And at the party, he's like, I want to do it. And he's like, you know, 16 or something. They're like, you can't, you can't, you can't. He begs and begs and begs and they let him do it. And the person that comes back is so impactful to one of the people that they don't pay attention to time and shit goes down. Oh, Wow. Okay. Yes. And so the remainder of the film is about what's happening to this young man who is like stuck somehow in this other world and the way in which they use this mystical hand to try to talk to people and what it makes them think and self-discovery. Hmm. And it's an intimate horror film that has far reaching implications that could be a larger series maybe, but on its own, it was pretty damn good. So I'm hoping that based on your description of the activity that these teenagers have to take, you talked about that if you invite the person in, the mm -hmm. ghost in, then you're sitting sidecar. I'm hoping that these new directors from YouTube used some kind of neat cinematic visual trick to make that feel very impactful for the audience. Because if it's mm. just a an actor who embodies a different physicality, then mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not going to be happy with it. But if it's something that they do to visually and maybe auditorially convey that this mm -hmm. kid is trapped in the sidecar, then I would be more interested. It's yes, they do things, but they're subtle things that are creepy, mm. right? So it's okay. not like okay. everything is tunnel vision or everything is sparklers. Instead, it's like, <laughs> that doesn't look quite right. Our people aren't supposed to move like that, are they? Like, is that normal? Like, it, it is an actor doing things, but definitely some digital tomfoolery and little makeup going on to make them. Hmm. And the longer they stay in, the worse it kind of gets. Because when you described it, the thing that popped mm -hmm. into my mind yeah. was the way that the people um, did the visual change change for get out when he fell into the trance realm mm, not entirely unlike that a little okay, shades of that okay. shades of that okay yeah is it movie take place like in a lot of locations or is it like a small movie kind of takes place like in <laughs> one house one scene kind of thing <laughs> It, it is a small movie. Like I said, actually, I like it's those, just actually. in this, it's in this little town, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. I like the movie that. starts with a grabber. You're at a party with a bunch of people you don't know, and they're looking for each other and terrible. Something happens. And then you <laughs> jump to a totally different group of people. Like what's that got to do with anything, but I'm already terrified. And then you start to find out how they're connected and that those people were involved with a hand and they gave it away to somebody because terrible things happened to them. And it's not something you've seen before. It's not completely hmm. original, but it's stuff done in a way that you have not seen before in what is, I think they were benefited by the fact it was a small budget film, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Right. Yep, yep. So I totally they do. were forced to do creative stuff. I think you're going to dig it. It's really, no, it really good. interesting. I'm going to give it a shot. Yeah, I just too. hope that, you know, I know you say nothing great come out in that realm. To me, Knock at the Cabin, still one of my favorite films that came out in mm -hmm. 2023. So did I, it? I would argue okay. that, yeah, yeah, yeah. that All came right. out in 2023. Now, I know you guys weren't as high on it as I was. I True. was, yeah, I yeah. liked to it. Me, I it was a it was revelation, hard, though. but I thought it was more mm -hmm. suspense. I got you. But <laughs> I mean, there's I mean, such a fine line it. there, movie. right? Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. But it, it feels like that this could be my my next big film for this year. So I'm definitely going to check it out. I think, thank you for the recommendation. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Thing. I'll be curious yeah. to see what you think. So you let us know. Are you tired of seeing your teen or young adult struggle on a path that clearly isn't the right fit? Is your teenager confused about which direction to take after high school? The future of work is changing rapidly, and our kids need to know all of the options available after high school so they're empowered to make the choice that is best for them. In each episode, we explore the latest trends that are shaping the opportunities of today and tomorrow. I'm your host, Betsy Jewell, and this is the High School Hamster Wheel Podcast. You're listening to Gen X Grown Up. But if you have a friend who's not yet listening, why not? Tell them about us. They'll thank you later. <laughs> to help relieve head cold misery, 
There's full prescription strength Actifed. Of the three leading cold medicines once sold by prescription, only one still comes in its original maximum full prescription strength formula, only Actifed. To help relieve the stuffy, drippy misery of a head cold, remember, full prescription strength Actifed. And to help reduce the fever and sinus pain of a bad head cold, now there's new Actifed Plus. I'm going to kick off our check-in toys this week because mm, okay. I actually did something pretty fun last weekend. I flew from Florida to Utah of all Salt Lake City. Okay. okay. Up in the mountains and watched the meteor shower. It was the height of the Perseus meteor shower, I think it's called. Okay. Wait a minute. that That's the reason oh, you went on the whole trip? Yeah. That was why we went. <laughs> okay. Wow. Uh, like, okay, I know Mo is big time, like, space NASA yeah, guy, yeah. loves all that stuff, and I get that. But how the fuck are you on this podcast and have the money to fly from Florida to Utah <laughs> just to go watch some asteroids, meteor thingies fall from the sky? This is that rich girlfriend thing again, isn't it? It's more girlfriend travels a lot and has a lot of points. Uh, <laughs> see, both you guys have benefited from having tons of airline miles at one point in your life or another. Yep. I never have. This is not right. <laughs> It was, I was fine with it. Uh, the, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Mo has no problem with your inability to go I places, no George. <sighs> so we drove up uh, like uh, an hour and a half from Salt Lake City up into the mountains. There's a dark sky areas. I know there's like certified dark sky areas in the United States. Mm, no light pollution. Like where there's no ambient light from cities right. or something. And yeah. there's some levels. There's like silver and then there's gold. Gold is like nothing, like no mm. artificial lights at all. And then silver is some, but you can still get a really good view of the sky and all that stuff. So the okay. place we went to was actually a silver. The thing was amazing. But what I wanted to talk about was that you see all the stars, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's hard to identify what's what, especially if you don't know, like I do for some of these. So there's an app out there called Skyview, and it's for both okay. Android and iPhone. It's a, a star chart. And how they do it, though, is it actually has like AR. So if you hold your phone up to the sky and you look uh, through it, and it, identify, it puts names next to all the stars. That that's kind of cool. At. It was Pretty cool. So how accurate is it? Like, is there literally, is it finding the exact right star and putting a dot right on it? Or? So it actually has the stars on the screen itself. So you may have to okay. shift a little bit to get them lined up right. Okay. But, all right. But that's all it takes. Once you do that, then it's set. But let me tell you, it's not like you have to like go far away. It's mm -hmm. you point at something. And once you kind of have it set, you start moving it. It tracks really well. It, like it tracks like hmm. direction you're facing. It knows where you are, latitude, longitude, all that fun stuff. So it knows what you mm. should be seeing in the sky, all that kind of fun stuff. You can tell, like, search for, because this particular meteor shower is coming from the, the uh, Perseus constellation. That's why it's called that. So I said, you know, I said, find that thing. And it had a little arrow on the screen. I was able to track across the sky with it. <laughs> oh, and it like a battle it zone arrow kind of thing? Yeah, actually on a little arrow. Screen? And you just kind of keep awesome. going to it. And it shows where <laughs> this it is. Way. Enemy, enemy <laughs> yeah. to your left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Battle zone. That's a good, I didn't think about that. That's a really good comparison. They... <laughs> Um, they have a, a a light one, which is free. And then they have like the full one, which is mm -hmm. like four ninety nine or five ninety something like that. Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. To me, well worth the money, especially if you're into this kind of stuff at all. Or, you know, if you had that thing where you kind of look up in the sky and there's like, what the hell is that? And you can pull this thing mm -hmm. up and apply right. it, figure it out. It was just neat to have something like that handy because, you know, back in the day, I remember having like that thing you rotate with the star chart on it and time to mm -hmm. figure out like oh, which right. one the right one is and point that the right because you had to know north. And, you know, and then you're looking down and up trying to match things. And, you know, this one, though, you just hold up the phone, looks through it, actually see the actual sky behind it. And you're able to actually find things and identify things. So it was, it was a very, very cool little app. It sounds like you have your own like astronomer there with you to tell yeah. you here are points of interest here are things to note right does it is it like a is it like a google map or like you can turn on different overlays and like see oh, the yeah, outlines absolutely. of constellations and stuff yep. oh you can put cool. constellation outlines you can say like only oh, show me neat. planets only show me certain stars oh, only man, show me this cool. and then mm -hmm. you like you hold up and you see that the outline will show up there with the lines connecting it and say, oh this is pegasus or this is that's you know, whatever will it also give you like any factoids about the things mm -hmm. you're looking at in case you know like uh how this <laughs> constellation came to be known or that kind of thing i did click on a couple things like certain like a star and it'll say oh this is the bubble a star and you'll click on if you tap on it it'll give you like more information on it like oh it's cool. this far away okay. and it's this kind of star and it's in this constellation and planets will do and it was pretty darn good i mean it, i it didn't do anything that i didn't needed to do you know i didn't think oh i wish it did this i mean 
everything I needed to do, it did. Well, it's one thing, it just worked really well too. You know what I mean? Like you're not trying to finagle it or, or it kind of worked. No, this one was like dead on for everything that I need to look at it. So it was, if you get a chance to do it, if you're at all interested in this kind of stuff, well worth the money. And it sounds like a major little vacation that much more enjoyable. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cause then you don't that's feel like cool. an idiot. Cause you just see a bunch of stars like, Oh, they're pretty. <laughs> but yeah. You, know, you look like, Oh, well that's the blah, blah, blah. I, you sound smart. I'd still <laughs> feel like an idiot. I just, other people wouldn't be able to tell cause I'd have that's information. The, that, my and that's really what matters, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's perception. It's all it's about perception. perception. It's how other people see you. you know? <laughs> I, I agree. <laughs> so that's why. How about you, George? What you got for us this week? Yeah, I um, I have one that I realize didn't realize was an app I should be talking about on the podcast until uh, John and I were talking and. I said, oh, well, why don't you just use this thing? It'll be a lot easier. And he's like, oh, my God, this is awesome. Why didn't you tell us about it? This should have been on the podcast. I'm like, really? (laughs) Okay. So (laughs) it's for your Windows PC, and it's called Ear Trumpet. Now, anybody who uses a Windows PC knows the trials and tribulations of that stupid little speaker icon in the bottom right-hand corner of your taskbar yeah, that sucks. does just enough of what you want it to do to piss you off. Yeah. That's how I yep. view the Windows Sound app. You, you have to click through five different other menus to get to the thing you really want to <laughs> know or change yeah. or look at, and it pisses me off every time. So, yeah. A while back, I was watching one of those YouTube channels that talks about, you know, the 10, you know, apps for your Windows PC that are free that you didn't know anything yeah, about. Must before, have. I had or, never yeah, heard about Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, this one's called Ear Trumpet. It okay. is from the Microsoft Store, and it downloads pretty quickly and installs on its own as anything from the Microsoft Store does. However, this actually functions, unlike many of the other <laughs> applications in the Windows <laughs> Microsoft Store. Uh, What it does, it gives you a more robust, more user-friendly way to control sound both in and specifically out of your computer. So it puts another little speaker icon in your taskbar. If you want, you can drag it down to the taskbar and make it a permanent part of your taskbar. So unfortunately, Hmm. you'll see two little speakers, but... (laughs) You know, you just you get used to which one is the right one. Mm-hmm. You can right click on it. And the first thing that it shows you is all of the different speaker options that you have. And you can just check mark one of those things instead of having to go through the rest of the crazy window. Oh, shit just to, to set, change it. Oh, yes. Just to is. change it. I use that part more than anything. Mm-hmm. Now, if you left click on it. It brings up all of those same speaker options, but it also brings up the speaker uh, or the sound options, the volume options of all the applications Mm -hmm. on your Windows computer that you can now control individually. So if you want a game to be louder than, say, Discord, you can drag the Discord sound part down. You can leave the game higher. Uh, It, you know, for your Google tabs or any other thing that display that puts sound out to your computer yep. it takes you there nice to me just those two functions alone made it worth the free download oh it's free on top of it yeah yeah as soon as you mentioned it i'm like what is it where do i find it i went <laughs> immediately downloaded it and on the computers where i've installed it i've actually disabled the windows little speaker i just go away i don't want to see you anymore yeah <laughs> so if you dig deep enough you can get rid of that how many times have you been like, oh, which I need to mix this. This is too loud, whatever. And you could do it in Windows if you don't mind mm-hmm. digging through 15, changing every time there's an update, different signs of menus in Windows. You can right. find it. Yeah. And now they're all there. And you can right click on an individual item and reroute it to a different output, all right from this one yes. thing. Yeah. It, thank you, George. Thank you so much for this <laughs> thing. It was very helpful. <laughs> this is going to be, remember you told us about everything, that search your computer deal? The search your computer, yeah. I use that all the time. It's one of the first, like I install, oh, what am I installing? Install Chrome, then install everything. And now it's going to be, and plus mm-hmm. install your trumpet. That's going to be like the starter pack for every computer for me. Those are mandatory now. It's a solid application with a well thought out user layout. And mm-hmm. the fact that it takes something that, Microsoft should be doing better yeah. after all these years and yeah, does think. it better for them. And then it's free on top of that. I, I kind of want to give these people money somehow. Like I wish <laughs> right. they had a tip thing on mm-hmm. the Microsoft yeah. Windows store, but of course that would probably go to fucking Microsoft anyway. So, <laughs> so what's the point? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Thanks for the recommendation. You've changed my life once again. <laughs> 
I'm Ken Harbaugh, host of Warriors in Their Own Words, a podcast that presents the unvarnished, unsanitized truth of what we have asked of those who defend this nation. As a country, we need these stories more than ever. Stories from Americans who have borne the battle, including 30-year-old remastered interviews with veterans from World War I recounting their time in the trenches of Europe, and with veterans from World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and from our most recent conflicts in Iraq, Afghanistan, and other battlefields Americans may never have heard of. Hear their stories by listening to Warriors in Their Own Words wherever you find podcasts. Each episode of Gen X Grown Up has show notes loaded with links where you can learn more about our topics. And there's even more to see and hear over at GenXGrownUp.com. That's me, Christina Ferrari, after I had my baby. Since then, I lost 25 pounds in three months with the Ultra Slim Fast plan. It was easy. Ultra Slim Fast is really delicious and satisfying. I'd have a thick chocolate shake for breakfast, another for lunch, then a great dinner. I love Ultra Slim Fast. It gave me back my figure, and I feel great. Now the only baby fat in this family is on the baby. Ultra Slim Fast. Give us a week. We'll take off the weight. This is the main event of the podcast. For the three in attendance locally and the millions listening around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time! And it's now time to talk about games, as that Woo-hoo. really handsome announcer just told us. <laughs> in that little, <laughs> that How can preview. you tell from the audio? Uh, How do you know? I'm just guessing his voice no. was <laughs> melodious or whatever that word is. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> melodic. There you go. Uh, he's, he's also clever. <laughs> he's, he's very smart. <laughs> he's smart. <laughs> Uh, let's go ahead and start with John. John, you have a game that I know isn't the thing I'm thinking of, but it's something else that's just as cool, I think. Okay. No, let's start with John. Speaking of handsome and clever, let's start with me. Absolutely. Wow. No, so <laughs> I opened the door on that one. <laughs> you did. I had to walk through. Uh, I want to talk about a game that I uh, just recently grabbed. Now, right now it's on, I think it's just on Steam platforms and it might even be like on Xbox and PlayStation, but not like on the Switch and all those other things right now. But it's definitely on the Windows Steam store. And this is a game called Full Void. Now, it, mm. the, I, don't, I don't know if the name's going to invoke anything for you or necessarily it should, um, from the description, let me tell you what it, what it sounds like, and let me tell you what it is. Uh, the description says a cinematic platformer where players guide an unnamed teenager against an AI revolution. Okay. Ah, okay. So you've got cinematic in there. You've got this unnamed protagonist. And as soon as, Mo, you want to watch this? Watch George perk up all of a sudden. You ready? Just, just watch on your screen. As soon as you play this game for the first time, from the animation to the pacing, to the cutscenes to the art style, it is heavily inspired by another world that we first discovered Ooh. on the Amiga <laughs> many, many <laughs> years ago. See, I told you. Did you see it? And you can yep. hear it. <laughs> yep. I'm in. <laughs> This is a spiritual, they don't say it anywhere, but it's a spiritual successor to Delphine Software's Another World, or then mm. it became Flashback oh, really? or some other things it was known as. And it's an adventure where you do very much the things you did in Another World. Like sometimes you're going to die until you learn that things can kill you. You know, imagine the cut scene where the worm jumps up and yeah. scrapes your leg and poisons Hits you and you, with you fall down. a little fang, yeah. Right, and that's how you learn they're poisonous. Mm-hmm. But immediately you're right back to the checkpoint, which is like one screen back. And now you have to figure out how to get past that, you know? Okay. So at the risk of having George implode, it's also a little bit Dragon's Lair-like in that. (laughs) Okay. In that you sometimes have to do things at the right time, but you don't know it until you fail once. Like maybe something's going to swing down and hit you in the head. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got to get hit in the head once to learn I have to duck now, right? So it feels a little bit like like what Limbo did as well, right? Those kind of- Indeed, indeed, yeah. Die one time, but get to play Mm -hmm. many kind of right. things okay but it's that it's that kind of learning process in the shape of uh, an another world style just the way mm. the character walks the way they jump up the, the just the fluidity of the movement you know imagine how we saw that so oh yeah uh, i played the demo of this i don't know several months ago and then uh, during our hiatus back in uh was that july that we had our hiatus about the beginning or middle of that the, the full version dropped uh and even if i think full it's like 16 bucks or something they had a launch discount okay. i went ahead and bought it and it was like, I don't know, 12 or something. Yeah, bad. First of all, if you liked Another World, just stop listening and go download this. Okay. But if you like action platformers in general,
general, especially ones that use that that weird, it's not even cell shaded. It's like cell shaded without any lines to it. It's just the fill, you know? So mm, you have these right, limited okay. colors and you achieve certain things. It's like they're using VGA graphics. They're only, oh, we can only use, you know, 128 colors or something, but it makes it look retro, but it's retro trying to not look retro. It's trying like an old computer doing its absolute best. And of course, your computer's not breathing hard, but it makes it look so fun and nostalgic. And I'm I probably, I don't know where I'm at. I'm maybe halfway through it. I've played about four hours of this thing. And while it does kill you unexpectedly a lot, it's not a cheat because you immediately resume and go right back into the game. It's just been a delight. The puzzles are cool. There are clever little things where you have, it's all AI. There's a world of AIs I read in the description and you find these little AI spiders and you can find a control panel and you teach them little programming. Like you program, you know, <laughs> right, 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 up, and then action. And then if the spider's in the right place, when you run it, he'll go that far, reach up and push a button for you. If you did it wrong, the programming is off. And you, they're like little mini games that are baked into it that expand on like the Another World platform model with modern gaming sensibilities, but never losing that spark that I think makes those, mm. those kind of games that good. Good. So from what I played of it so far, I mean, it's it's easily a four token game. Have I got my 12 bucks out of it? You know, 12 hours? No, but I expect I will. And uh, I think it's we've talked about this before. It's a game you play, but when you're not playing it, you kind of think about it and you're like, oh, I need to get back to playing that because the story is kind of pulling you back into it. So is it a, how long is the game itself? Do you know? I don't know for sure. I mean, like I said, I'm about three or four hours into it. So I'm going to guess it's not more than eight hours. Most games, indie games like this probably are. That's going to be my guess. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's not bad, so, though. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely check it out. Uh, Mo, as, as usual, I'll throw you the link and you can throw it down mm-hmm. in the show notes for our listeners. And and, and there's a free demo. I, I threw the demo still out there. Just play the demo, which is the first, you know, like 30 minutes of the game. So it's pretty oh, damn cool. cool. All right. Mo, as I said at the top of the show, I'm eager to find out what's the big deal <laughs> with this Baldur's Gate thing. So <laughs> <laughs> tell me yeah. all about your experiences with Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah. It's uh, so Baldur's Gate is basically a, uh, it's a franchise of games, obviously, just three of them out. And they are probably probably the closest to following Dungeons and Dragons rules of any computer version okay. of it out there. Your character creation follows the rules. When you're playing the game, it follows it. You know, when you have to do things, mm-hmm. you have to roll dice. And But all in all of that, it's still like a really fun third person adventure game, essentially. You know, you're trying to get to the city, Baldur's Gate, but there's a whole, there's like, a, you can spend your whole life doing side quests in this thing. Uh, <laughs> and... <laughs> And when I say it's fun, it's like I was talking with because I, I got the game for my daughter, then her husband bought it. And then, you know, my girlfriend's son has it. And we we're sitting there, like just comparing notes and talking about this. And they're like, mm-hmm. oh, you didn't get so and so. And I'm like, oh, crap, I must have walked right past them. And, you know, <laughs> um, you know, my daughter restarted because she realized she missed too much stuff the first time through. It's just a, an incredibly dense, involved game. Just about every single person that you see, like NPCs that you sit there and click on, you have a conversation with them. There is a conversation possibility in there. Mm-hmm. You know, people just don't do like, I mean, there are some, of course, but most of the people just don't do the standard like, oh, I'm too busy to talk and, you know, kind of turn around, you know, right. that kind of thing. You walk into random rooms and next thing you know, you're on this other side quest just because you read, picked up something that was on a table. Hmm. It's an amazingly fun game. It's one that it's, I don't think I've heard this many people actually playing a game like this in a while, you know, even more so yeah. I think than uh, Diablo 4, to be honest. Wow. Yeah, I told you, it's, it's all the people on my friends list are talking about or playing. That's why I was so curious. So one thing I would like to know is I, I don't know if this game is for me. While I like Dungeons and Dragons, I've never really enjoyed video game versions of them that much. Yeah. But like Dungeons and Dragons, though, is this a single player adventure? Do you play yes. with a group of people online together or do you have a squad or how does it work? Um, you're a single player. You play by yourself. You get okay. But you control four people up to four people. So you, you have a party, party, but it's all you control them all. Right. And when you get into okay. combat, it becomes turn based at that point. Up, up until that oh, point, though, huh? you just you just run around wherever the hell you want to. Oh, I kind of like turn based. That's cool. Yeah. And, and when you fight. Even things like, um, you know, you're talking with somebody and depending on which one your character is talking, you may get different options mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. like if your character is the same race as the character you're talking to, you may get totally different options in the conversation. Uh, different information. They like you different better information. or something. Yeah. I see. They may, be, mm-hmm. they may be friendly to them. They may be less friendly to you. Yeah, and even things like, you know, you're, you're walking around and you'll see just something like, you know, perception roll fails. And you're like, what? Like, you're like, what the hell did I just walk past? I was supposed to see and didn't see. <laughs> <laughs> you know? um, but it does a really good job. There is an adds 
just enough dice rolling to make it fun. Like when you're in combat, you just basically say, you know, you hit the little sword thing, hit the character, and it goes up and whacks with your sword. Uh, but you have a lot of options of what type of attacks you do. And there's no dice rolling there. It just tells you whether it works and, or not. You know, it does all the dice rolling is behind the scenes, essentially. You don't really see that. The only time you really see dice is when, when you're doing something special, like, you know, did you see this? Did you're trying to decipher something, pick a lock, that kind of stuff. And then it tells you all the numbers so you can see how it's following like the DD rules. It's like, like you say, like, well, you have, so, so you literally, you literally see dice. You can, yeah, you're saying dice rolls. Dice I thought you roll. meant, oh, you actually see the die. I thought you were saying it's randomized. Do you have a chance? Yeah, you, oh. you click the die and it rolls. <laughs> and then it's just, it says like, you know, you, you have to get greater than a 10 to, Pick this lock and then blow it. You see, interesting because you're a thief, you get a plus one. You have this, it's a plus two. But then when the dice rolls, it adds it all up for you. It says, Hey, you succeeded. You're like, Great. The best feature it has is quick save. <laughs> I use that so much <laughs> um, because uh, you get attached to these characters and they can die. Oh, yeah. But the thing is that there are so many people you can have in your party that you're like sitting there agonizing, like, Oh, but I, I don't want to give up this person, but this guy's so cool, or this is a wizard and he can really just fucking magic missile the crap out of people. And so you spend a lot of time doing that kind of stuff too. It has the whole thing with like armor, but they really took out the drudge work pieces of the of Dungeon Dragons when you're playing this. And you mm-hmm. can play co-op with somebody else. So you actually can play with another person online or actually on the same computer, I think somehow. But then you're each controlling, I think like two members of the party or something along those lines. Hmm, uh, okay. So everyone I know is talking about it. I thought I played it a lot, which I turns out, I guess I haven't in the scope of other people in the world. <laughs> because, uh, you know, my daughter's sitting there like, oh, yo, when you do that, I'm like, what? I, where are you talking about? She's like, oh, I guess you're not up to that yet. I'm like, how far in the game yeah. is that? And I said, I probably played a good probably 16 hours total since I've Ooh. had this thing for like a week and a half-ish or so. And I feel like I've barely gotten past the first area, but not in a bad way, you know, because mostly I, I like doing solid to side crap. Well, now I kind of get it. Now I understand why everybody's playing it and talking about it. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it, makes, it sounds pretty cool, actually. I don't it know is. if it's for me, but I, I probably will go watch somebody play at least and see. Yeah. All right. Yep. So cool. So that's what I got. So how about you, George? What do you got first? Yeah, so I want to talk about a game uh, that has its origins from January 14th of 2016. That's when my game playing world kind of did another change. Uh, This time it was originally called Oxenfree. You guys remember that game, I'm sure. Yes. We played it like crazy. Well, July 12th of 2023, almost seven years and six months, almost to the day, Oxenfree 2 Lost Signals came out during our hiatus. I bought it, didn't play it until recently because we were on our hiatus and we were doing a bunch of stuff with conventions, SFGE and Infinity Con and whatnot. I finally got around to playing it this week. Unlike Mo, who's played 16 hours of his game, I have played 10 minutes of this game, and I believe I've already finished whatever <laughs> I've finished at this point. What? How is uh, that? <laughs> well, if you've played Oxenfree, you might remember that oftentimes you do certain things and the screen gets all fuzzy and VHS weird tracking kind of stuff happens and you end up back at a point you started at. But things oh, are the same, but also slightly different. And there's conversations that you know you had, but now they're different because of whatever happened before. Oh, the game's messing with you. I know what's happening. Yeah, it's <laughs> it happens 10 minutes into the game. And wow. It is bonkers and crazy and fun and kooky and a good sense of humor and interesting dialogue, simple play mechanics of point and click to move people and dialogue choices. They've added a couple of new features into this one. Like now you have a radio and you can adjust what channel your uh, walkie talkie. I mean, not radio. You do have a radio as well. You Mm -hmm. have both the walkie talkie. You can adjust what channel it's on and you're going to get different people talking to you based on whatever channel you go to yeah um the radio can be tuned to different things and there has already been a portal in the first 10 minutes of wow this game. wow that so, was like three hours in the first game <laughs> yeah, yeah um, I'm to wow really really engrossing and engaging for me i love the art style i checked it out this company that produces these games called Night School Studio, they apparently came out with a game in between these two called After Party. I love these Oxenfree games so much, I'm going to go buy After Party. All their games are pretty much either $10 or $20. 
you're probably going to get anywhere from three to five hours of gameplay on your first run. Okay. And I say first mm. run because if you remember the first one, mm-hmm. you're going to have different stuff to do on a second run. Different things are going to open up. Different things are going to be hidden. Mm-hmm. I don't know how many runs you really go through to see everything. Cause I didn't, I don't think I got all the way through the first game. <laughs> <laughs> I know I finished it at least once, but you're right. There are different endings and different things available to you now. So two notes and one question for you. First <laughs> okay. note is you gifted me this when it was on sale. Thank you so very much. I appreciate that. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Number two, uh, at the same time, my daughter bought it for herself and started playing it. She's the one that introduced the game to me. And I think maybe I introduced it to you or maybe we all found it and discovered it together. I don't remember. I can't remember. Yeah. The first one, but she's a super fan. Depends she on has, which portal we were living in at that point. It, that's right. That's right. <laughs> she has an oxen free tattoo. She's such a fan. She has oh, like, wow. the, like the triangulated, like the, the three triangle. dots with the yeah. triangle. Yeah. yeah. She has a tattoo of that. She has to explain it to people who don't know oxen free but for people who know oxen free they're like holy crap oxen free like they know it right away um and the, the, then the question part of what i wanted to uh, to ask oh by the way she's played through oxen free too at least twice i know of so she's okay. already well into it <laughs> but uh, i have not even launched it yet you gave it to me i just haven't gotten around to it mm-hmm. my question for you so you enjoyed the art style how same or different is it the the art style and the play mechanics to the original have they gone have they veered very far off or is it very similar what, what was your experience i would say it's probably a 10 10- percent change oh the graphics so the are very similar mm-hmm. uh, it's definitely on the same game engine that they used before with the same game mechanics the speech bubbles are a little bit nicer and easier but okay. after looking at the video for that other game that they put out in between the two called after party i think that's where they developed this new style that Oxen Free 2 it. uses sure. okay yeah um and it's completely different characters you are on another island but mm-hmm. you're different people <laughs> and you're there for different reasons. Yep. And there's even kind of a in the portal jump that happened. I don't want to spoil the game for anybody, but you're mm-hmm. going to see it 10 minutes into the game. So <laughs> this would probably have been in a free demo if they had had it. Uh, there's even some characters that look very purgish to me. Like oh, they're really? wearing masks oh, yeah. and they're right. all kind of mm. creepy and freaked out. And you end up near them mm. at some point for a brief moment. And you're like, oh shit, oh shit. And then it resets. <laughs> so I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It's to your point earlier, John, when there's a game that you play and then you stop playing it and then you keep thinking about it mm-hmm, and you say mm-hmm. to yourself, Oh, I got to get back to the game. Mm-hmm. That's what oxen free is for me. It's a very solid offering for a very affordable price from an independent studio. Really well done. It reminds me an awful lot of Kartik and the guys over there who have mm-hmm. done Twin Cop and Void Souls and other stuff. Mm-hmm. For Finite Reflections, sure. Yeah, yeah, it's it's that same kind of feel. And I'm very happy to live in an age when these small independent groups of one to 20 people or however many they have, have a platform that they can distribute their game on to the entire world. And mm-hmm. actually, if they do a good job, get noticed and get get people to love the thing that they created. Hell yeah. Yeah. This is one of those that frankly, this is, th- well, this is two of those. I can say it's three Baldur's Gate, not so much. <laughs> it's a big <laughs> franchise, but full void yeah. is like that too. And that's, it's a really, mm-hmm. it's a really cool time to be playing games for, especially for old guys that started when games didn't exist. And then they were all <laughs> yeah. companies and now they're little, like people like us in their garage. That would have been us as kids with infinite free time. We'd have been making our own games if we yeah. could. Yep. You know? That's awesome. Coming up on 5-Minute News. I'm Anthony Davis. You might think it's partisan because maybe it's critical of one side or the other, but it's not. It's just the truth. And I think that's also something that's kind of unusual for Americans listening to the radio or to podcasts because the news landscape in the States has been so partisan for so many decades. So 5-Minute News is verified, truthful, independent, unbiased, and essential world news daily. If you're a die-hard Gen X grown-up, you can pledge your support by clicking join on YouTube or by becoming a patron at genxgrownup.com slash Patreon. This is the heart of the remarkable GE Miser household bulb. Its advanced design creates light from energy ordinary bulbs waste. A light that saves you energy, and that saves you money. With GE Miser lights, you get all the light you need to help keep your home bright, safe, and secure. 
The more you replace ordinary bulbs with GE Mizolites, the more energy and money you save. GE Mizolites, they save you energy, and that saves you money. GE, we bring good things to life. As we wind up this episode, you know, always here in this final segment, we like to take a moment to talk about the things we're looking at right now or looking forward to between now and the next time that we get together. Uh, and I'll start with a few items. Uh, the first thing I have is uh, Equalizer 3, uh, the uh, third film in the Equalizer franchise. And so, it is hmm. coming out September 1st. I liked the first one. I like the second one more. This third one looks like almost more John Wicky than Equalizer, but I'm okay huh. with that. It looks <laughs> it looks like he's an even bigger badass than he was, and he's he's kicking more ass than he was in the previous one. So I think that's going to be fun. Uh, the second thing I'm looking forward to is My Arcade, the company that made those little tabletop arcade and handheld mm -hmm. toys that we reviewed on our channel forever. They showed a bunch of stuff at CES. We're right around the corner from those things at CES finally hitting the light of day. Starting in September, we'll start seeing those things. They'll start shipping. We'll start getting a chance to review them because there's been such a drought for so long of the mid-range mm -hmm. toys. It's been the expensive toys. And plus, it's going to be great new content for our channel. Plus, I'm going to get some new toys to play with. And I'm excited about the stuff that they're doing. They've they've taken a long time developing these new items. And you'll see. Just keep an eye on the channel. You'll see some cool stuff coming up. The thing I'm most looking forward to, you guys remember Digital Eclipse did that amazing Atari 50 celebration, that package oh, that yeah, had the yeah, history yeah. of Atari and all that. Mm -hmm. That same company, Digital Eclipse, has a brand new release called The Making of Karataka. Oh, This is the, the Jordan Mechner game that predated Prince of Persia. It, it's, it's, oh, it was right. this kind of mm -hmm. the role playing thing. It was karate and you, you went from stage to stage and there was, without any verbalization, there was like dialogue going on and people were bad guys and good guys. It, it, it told a story in a way that no game prior to that did. But Digital Eclipse is taking that game and giving it that Atari 50 style treatment. It's a documentary that you play through. You play through different oh, versions of the cool. game and prototypes mm. and interviews with the makers and interviews with mu oh, musicians nice. and people. Cannot wait. Digital Eclipse has just really found a new niche and they are owning it. And I can't wait to see what they do with this. So uh, I don't know if I said, but that is hitting August 29th. Ninth. So as you hear this, it's just a week or so away uh, and it's going to be on all, all major platforms. So, you know, wish listed or keep an eye on it. Uh, I think it's going to be really, really cool. So George, how about you? Nice. What do you got coming up? Uh, well, uh, first thing I'm looking forward to is more merchandise sales. So those of you Ooh. out there in the know, John put out a video that went ballistic and crazy. And then YouTube decided that a 1980s adult <laughs> platform was too controversial for <laughs> it oh, and could not be monetized. However, they still want the goddamn video up so you know they're making ad revenue on it yeah, yeah. whatever yep. assholes fuck you youtube um but <laughs> you just take all the ads off of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but during that video john did a a brief spot where he talked about our new merchandise stuff and this is stuff that we've had in the past but also new things that i'm creating with some ai art generators and mm -hmm. uh we've been putting it out on uh, very cool stuff public and red bubble and amazon and uh, it really started goosing the sale. So that's really nice. Next thing I'm looking forward to is the same thing that John is looking forward to, Equalizer 3. I've been mm, looking forward yep. to this ever since the end of Equalizer 2. I'm a big fan of the franchise. Uh, mm. Fuqua and Washington are a dynamic duo when they create films, and they have really knocked these this franchise out of the park from the horrible 80s TV show that mm -hmm. my father loved that I hated. Uh, <laughs> but Sorry. I think the thing that... Uh, I'm most looking forward to, and it's going to require me to catch up a little bit from some stuff that I haven't watched yet, is Archer Season 14 mm -hmm. is coming out, and, and they call it an epic climax. I don't know if that, that means before. it'll be the end, but they've of course done they that did. like they've four did, times. Yeah, they've so. done that so many times. <laughs> I mean, who knows? I It can just be a clever f turn on words or something, and there can be some kind of weird stuff going on between he and one of the other agents, and I'll be <laughs> fine with it. Uh, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, but it's going to be on FX, starts on August the 30th, season 14 of Archer. I think it's going to be a blast. Mo, what about you? Well, 
playing more Baldur's Gate, obviously. Uh, they, <laughs> you know, I got to catch, yeah. catch up with my kids. Otherwise, you know, I'll never hear the end of it. I'm also looking forward to Archer because like you, like, I, you know, every time they said it was the last season, I was like, oh, man, did they come with another one? I'm like, OK. Right. And that's going back to like season seven. I think they yeah. canceled it. Exactly. <laughs> and then they did this weird alternate universe episodes. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was a weird yeah, show. But yeah. anyway, but I'm still going to watch it. But what I'm really, really, really looking forward to, and I've been looking forward to for a while, is the Disney series Ahsoka, which is yeah. in the Star Wars. Yep. I am yep. so looking forward to this. The trailers, every trailer that comes out, it's like they bring in the characters from Star Wars Rebels, the animated one that are going to mm-hmm. be in it. The bad guys in it. Uh, Ahsoka is by far one of my favorite characters, of the, especially of the new <laughs> ones, because she's just a complete badass. And so I, you know, I'm hoping that it lives up to the expectations. But yeah, it's coming out August 23rd. So if you're listening to this, it's already out. It's out now. Are they dropping the whole thing or is this going to be episodic? Is it? I They're doing the first two episodes. Episodes, I think they're going to drop. The okay. Then it's right. be and then they'll week. weekly. Okay. Which, I, you know, uh, you know, I'm okay with that. You know, it, like you said, it kind of help. It, <laughs> it, it forces me to ration. It takes the pressure off. And you don't have to send Disney yeah. plus, right? Yes. There's tons of good stuff, man. It's, it's good to be back from hiatus. Cause I'm, now I'm not behind on all this cool stuff. And I'm finding out about <laughs> stuff that I, I didn't hear about. So, Hey, before we get out of the show, I have yet another new patron to think. I'm sorry, not a new patron, yet another existing patron who chose to give us a raise. I correct oh, myself wow. there. I can't believe how often this happens. Happens, but Jimmy O has been a patron for a little while, not that long, I think less than a year, actually. Uh, thank you, Jimmy. He decided he liked us a little more than he thought he did the first time. So he went in and just <laughs> changed his pledge level. Now, it will get him some little perks. He'll get the uh, the care package from you in a few months, Mo, because okay. he went up to that new tier. Because, uh, yes, you can become a patron for just you know a dollar or two a month. But if you pick a certain tier, there are bonuses to be had. And so maybe Jimmy just loves us that much, or maybe he just wants your, your care package, Mo. Either way, I'm fine with it because I'm grateful that he chose to support us in this way and that we're able to give him a thank you in the yeah, form of absolutely. that. So Jimmy, thank you so much for that. You're joining, you know, you're part of a roster of amazing people that support us. If you're listening and not already on Patreon, if you'd like to support the show, it's easy. Just head over to genxgrownup.com slash Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, you can become part of our army of supporters that we absolutely could not exist without. So to you, Jimmy, and everyone else, thank you so much. And while we're on the topic of patrons, <laughs> we have a Another yeah. Patreon question. Yeah, we do. So this week's question is from Uno Clay, which we all know hey, he's been Uno a big supporter of this for years, for a, yeah. years and years and years. Very active. Um, so he posted this question, and I was looking through a whole bunch of questions, and this one I thought we get some really good answers. So let's see where we go okay. with this one. So right. George and John, what mm-hmm. movies or shows? Have you revisited and they didn't hold up under the lens of your older eye? So like mm. probably I'm mm. thinking of a show we probably watched in the 70s or 80s or you know, later night that we look at today and we're like, ooh, that's mm-hmm. eh, it's mm-hmm. not as good as I remember it. So who wants to go first? Hmm. Uh, I can go. Not me. I'm right. Mine's okay. not George. Here we go. John. All right. Uh, <laughs> mine is easy because I really just wa- started watching, I tried to watch it some more last week because I had heard that Ryan Reynolds on whatever streaming channel he's doing his work on, he was reviving for little interstitials and segments within this channel. I think it's called Fuse or something or other. He, he's making new bits with Alf, the alien life form, the puppet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so it made me go, oh, yeah, Alf. I really enjoyed that show. So I went right out to the internet and I found it and I downloaded it and I pushed play. And it was like watching a fuzzy, unfunny Don Rickles walk around <laughs> a living room. <laughs> I, I don't know why I thought it was so funny or so clever, but he's just a rude, snarky little asshole that's so mean to this family. And sometimes they try to force in some lessons or the, he kind of likes them a little bit. But in general, he's a jerk and he's not that funny. And so Alf is my answer. I I, I really liked it. If I had not watched it again, I'd be like, oh, I love that. And now I'm like, yeah, it's fine. It's all right. So that's my answer. Thanks, Uno Clay. Okay. How about you, George? I think you better go before me because I've got a list. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. So this one. Who's surprised? No one. Okay. <laughs> So this one is probably going to make John happy and upset George. Okay. I just All right. recently I like started, the answer already. I started trying to rewatch The Goonies. <laughs> and I have to tell you that that movie was very, very difficult for me to get through again. <laughs> wow. I, I know. I know. It's just, it's And part of it was the, the, 
stereotypes that they throw in there. Not just the Asian kid, but all of them are just the stereotypical <laughs> fucking bullshit kids. Um, the whole story. I mean, now, granted, there's still there were moments in it. That I'm like, OK, that's why I remember I liked it, because there were certain moments that were just as amazingly good moments in it. But just overall, the whole thing behind it, I'm like, would they make mm. the same movie today? I'm like, uh, probably not like this. They probably do something a little bit different. You know, I mean, the mm-hmm. characters are not deep at all, which is fine. I mean, most 80s movies were like that. But I have to admit that for this one, it wasn't. It, it, it wasn't as good as I remembered it being when I watched it the first time I was younger. All right. So, I don't want to talk now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you have a list to get through, George. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. I got a list. All right. <laughs> and Mo is on it. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of something that didn't hold up, freaking Mo. <laughs> I was trying hard to pick one thing to talk about. And so what I did, I went to my own personal Plex server, chose my movies category, said, you know, sorted out by decade, 1980s, and mm-hmm. just started going through lists. I didn't get like five rotational clicks of the mouse down before I'm like, oh, yeah, God, that looks like shit now. <laughs> oh, this looks like shit now. Holy hell, that's terrible. So I'll just start in the A's, shall oh, I? Jesus. Uh, <laughs> The first movie, honestly, on my list is April Fool's Day. You guys remember this was the comedy mystery horror thing that came out where it kept you guessing as to who was being murdered and all these little like college people are getting picked off one by one on this island Mm -hmm. and the college lady that invited them all out to the island she starts going crazy and they're pretty sure it's her that's killing it and then it turns out that it was really just this elaborate hoax to set up to get her prepped for turning the family house and island into a bed and breakfast that specializes in murder mysteries. That's the whole (laughs) plot of the film. It was fun then, but not now. Another one band of the hand. This was one of those. Do we have 26 of these? Are we doing every letter? I I, I could. I'm just going to go through three of them. Okay. Okay. All right. Band of the hand. (laughs) Okay. uh, This is one of those classic Miami Vice, you know, wannabe type of things where five hoodlum teenagers get recruited to go into this special program as opposed to going to youth correctional camp. And every one of these fuckers is like 35 years old, not 15. Mm -hmm. Um, And of course their mentor gets killed halfway through it. So they have to band together against the evil drug Lord who's threatening (laughs) this neighborhood that they're trying to protect. It was fun then, not now. And then kind of one that's sad for me because it was one of those VHS finds that we talk about often in the um, segments when we talk about video rental stores back in the day. Battle Beyond the Stars is fucking awful. The animated? That was always awful, though. No, it's not animated. (laughs) It's the one with uh, John Boy from The Waltons. Oh, Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And John Saxon and Sybil Danning and I can't even remember who other B grade scream queen kind of actors they threw at this thing. But Mm -hmm. it it was I'm 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 not saying it wasn't awful then, but it was like a cult classic kind of a thing at that point. Like people mm-hmm. discovered it on VHS sure. and they kind of liked it and it had some interesting stuff. Special effects are awful in it, but it had spaceships flying around. It was 1980, so it was still allowable <laughs> at that point like cuz Battlestar Galactica wasn't exactly the greatest special effects, but <laughs> you know, yeah. you only really had Star Wars to compete against and this was not Star Wars. But yeah, those three films just in the first couple of clicks of my mouse wheel were like oh god yeah mm. that's mm-hmm. that's not good i can keep going if you guys want no no, no that's fine whole, we'll see some body slam is in here <laughs> you can give us a Chud. full list we'll post it for patrons sure oh my yeah. goodness <laughs> caddyshack 2 was well that wasn't good to begin oh, that with. was uh, caddyshack 2 goodness sucked grace. that was healthy too i looked at some of these movies i'm like okay i didn't like it back then either so <laughs> it, it's <laughs> it may have gotten worse with time, but... So, Mo, if a patron would like to get their question here on the show, what do they have to do? Yeah, if they're a patron, all they got to do is message us. Uh, just send a question to us at through patreon.com. There's a whole message board there. I'm watching it mm-hmm. every couple of days, stripping out the okay. questions, making up a list. Right. And like I said, I mean, we'll try to get... I'm, I'm looking for the really interesting questions. So mm-hmm. try to be creative with what they come up with and we'll do our best to answer them. So what you're saying is Mo is going to judge your questions. So we have good ones. Got it. Wow. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, <laughs> fair. Interesting. Okay. You know. All right. Well, cool. Thanks. Day of the Thank Dead, you, Death Clay. Trap. Jesus Christ. <laughs> he's got, he's only in the Ds. He's, he's still, still going. going. <laughs> All right. 
All right, and they're before all this... on my Plex server. <laughs> Damn it. Delete them. <laughs> All right, that is going to wrap it up then for this edition of the show. Don't worry, we'll be back in two weeks with another one. Next week, though, is our backtrack. That's where we pick a single nostalgic topic and dig in deep. And next week, we're talking about a topic that we all know intimately, 80s fashion trends. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Because you can tell that the three of us were definitely up on the latest fashions Mm. all through the 80s. (laughs) There, There are some notable and conspicuous fashion trends that you can probably think of that existed in the 80s. Uh, We're going to run down a list of 10 of the best known ones, uh, evaluate them, and tell you whether or not we approve of said fashion trends or like be associated with them at all. So if you enjoy fashion trends or you would like to see if we are out of our minds, tune in next week. (laughs) Our backtrack all about (laughs) 80s fashion trends. Until then, I am John. George, thank you so much for being here. Yes, sir. Mo, you know I appreciate you. (laughs) Always fun, man. (laughs) Fourth list it is you we all appreciate most of all we can't wait to talk to you again next time bye bye see you guys take care everybody no life no fun don't you know that you're a grown up Jet X grown up is a member of the evergreen podcast family learn more at evergreenpodcasts.com no shows till sunrise unacceptable for grown ups your dinner cannot just be french fries basically life sucks as a grown up yeah, yeah. It's show for an old show that you just now saw that you like didn't hold up well. You've revisited didn't hold up to your older eye. And so this yeah. my eye is about as old as it can be for me, because it was just last <laughs> week or so. I hope it didn't mean like physically like in focus, because nothing's ever going to be in focus <laughs> oh, from my eyes. I you know. It's like <laughs> I don't think the text mean, is getting bigger on my phone. <laughs> Well, and half the apps can't handle it. Half yeah, the apps, no. the text is scrolling off the side. I'm like, I wonder what that button yeah. says. <laughs> Greetings from Evergreen Podcasts. We're rolling out a listener survey, and we want to hear from you. The information in the survey will help us gather statistics and in turn make our shows more appealing to advertisers. I know most people don't like ads, but this is one of the only ways our shows make money and help keep their lights on. We promise it will only take a few minutes, but the impact on our podcasts will be tremendous. As a token of our appreciation, we'll randomly select one lucky participant each month to win an exclusive merchandise package from Evergreen Podcasts. Head to evergreenpodcast.com slash listener survey to help a show and possibly get some free stuff for doing so. We can't thank you enough for the support. Now back to the show.